<clears throat> okay, welcome to a video about the TVR Vixen. Um, on my left is a car that I've had since 1989. But before I talk about the car itself, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Vixen in general. Uh, the TVR Vixen was a continuous evolution from, from Series 1 to Series 4. The Series 1 Vixen was based on a previous model called the, uh, Grand, the 1800S and was quite different to the Series 2 and Series 3, which were very similar in fact, only minor cosmetic differences. And then the Series 4 was in internally different, but externally looking the same as perhaps the Series 3. Okay, so the big difference between the Series 1 and Series 2 was the way the body was mounted, or the shell was mounted to the chassis. In the Series 1, it was bonded to the, sh to the chassis, um, and it also had a different, en different engine. So, the Series 2 was probably an improvement because the body and chassis were separate, and therefore maintenance was considerably easier. Um, and if I open the bonnet here, You, can, you might be able to see, but you might not, that the chassis tubes are round in cross-section. On the later cars, the Series 4, the chassis tubes were square and these evolved into the M Series. So there's a natural evolution from the 1800S to the S1, S2, S3, S4 and then the 1600M. Um, I intend in these series of videos to really focus on two models, the Series 2 Vixen and the Series 3. This particular one is a Series 3 car. Um, the Series 2 and 3 covered a, a period roughly from 1968, I suppose, until 1971. This one was registered in 1971. The Series 2 was produced in larger quantities. There were allegedly 438 Series 2 Vixens produced. There were 168, as far as I know, Series 3 cars produced, although Wikipedia says 165. Um, I think that those figures are pretty similar, but uh, who knows which is correct. Okay, the Differences between a Series 2 and a Series 3 are not massive, but they're fairly easy to tell. The most obvious difference is the Series 3 has these aeroflow vents from a Ford Zephyr Zodiac Mark IV. Um, also internally, the heater controls on a Series 3 consist of a single rotary from an MGB GT. Um, series 2 cars generally had two, rotary, two separate rotary controls. Um, the rear of the car for the S2 and S3 is identical apart from the model badge. They both have the wraparound Mark II Cortina tail lights, uh, whereas previous models had the so called Ban the Bomb or CND rear lights from a Mark I Cortina. Uh, so it's not that difficult to tell the models apart. The Series 4 Vixen isn't that easy to spot until you lift the bonnet, when if you look at the chassis tubes you'll find that it's got square longerons. The longerons are the chassis tubes running from uh, front to rear. Uh, and it's reckoned that roughly 
a hundred of the S3s are still registered. Um, there may be some that are not registered, but uh, probably a hundred out of 168 do remain in. Uh, how many of them are actually running is another matter. People are continuously restoring them, uh, but generally the number is, I would say, about a hundred. Okay. That's a little bit of history on the Vixen Series 3. The, the bulk of the videos I'm going to make over the next few weeks really will interchangeably cover the S2 and the S3. So there's almost nothing, no difference in terms of mechanicals. In fact, I can't really think of anything significant that's different between them. In another video, I'm going to talk about some of the detail of the mechanicals. Um, if you want to read about these cars, then there are a number of books, and in fact there's another one coming out in November, which features this particular car by Matthew Vale, and it does concentrate on the so-called uh, Martin Lilly era. So that is really going up to 1980. So in 1980 there, there were introduction of different shape cars. So prior to that date, the shape of the TVRs was kind of similar um, and easily recognisable. One of the most recognisable features is the, the rear cam tail, that's K-A-N-N, which is a type of aerodynamic device. Uh, if you want to read more about these cars, as I said, there are numerous books. Um, I've got a couple here. This one's by Graham Robson, which Graham kindly signed for me. Um, it's TVRs from Grand Tira to Tamar by Graham Robson, volume one. Whether it's still in print, I don't know, but probably you could go to avebooks.co.uk to get a copy. Uh, a much rarer and probably sought after book is the famous first edition of Peter Philby's book, Success Against the Odds. Now this is a must read for any owner who's got a pre-1980 car. Um, it features some very interesting photographs used for publicity purposes when, in the days when political correctness um, hadn't been thought of. Uh, so I'd strongly recommend this book if you can get it, but you should expect to pay a fair sum for it. I've seen copies change hands for £200. But again, you can probably look on abebooks.co.uk, um, eBay of course as well, and Amazon. Um, but if you can get this book, then it's well worth the money, usually. Okay, well that's a, a small introduction into the... Vixen Series 2, Series 3. Thank you. <coughs>